Today we're taking a closer look at the Mail and Guardian article titled How the EFF Has Failed Us. The piece critiques the economic freedom fighters reflecting on their journey over the past decade. But before we dive into our reaction, let's first unpack what the article is saying. The article starts by reminiscing about the EFF's early days when their disruptive antics in parliament were seen as a much needed shakeup in the political landscape dominated by the unchallenged ANC. The EFF's brand of bold defiance seemed like a breath of fresh air South Africa needed, especially when state capture was silently creeping in. We are not, uh, we are not like all of them. We are a protest movement. Our organization is found on principle of anti-corruption. Anyone found guilty of corruption will never sit proudly and wear the beret of economic freedom fighters. Anybody found guilty of corruption. So there shouldn't be a question about that. However, according to the article, what was once revolutionary has now become mundane. The EFF's tactics, which once grabbed headlines, are now seen as predictable and opportunistic. The article particularly criticizes Julius Malema, suggesting that his inability to adapt and introspect has led a party down a path of decline. Also highlighted is the departure of key figures like Floyd Shivambu to the MK party as a symptom of deeper issues within the EFF. Many of them are using the Third National People's Assembly as a threat that if they do not get elected or are not part of the leadership discussions leading up to the conference, then they will leave and join MKP. We must never be blackmailed by those who want to threaten us with leaving after the Third National People's Assembly. I want to say to them, leave now. Leave now so that we can know how many soldiers we have in this struggle to liberate our people. You must but on a somewhat positive note, the article reluctantly admits that the EFF still plays a crucial role in South African politics, particularly in voicing the concerns of the downtrodden. But here's where we need to pause and critically assess the article itself. While the Mail and Guardian brings up some valid observations, the tone of the piece raises a few eyebrows. It's almost as if the article is less about providing an objective analysis and more about airing personal grievances against the EFF. Whatever happened to the principle of non-biased reporting? If the EFF has indeed lost its way, then it should be presented through solid, undisputable facts, not with the kind of emotional undercurrent that runs through this article. The article makes it seem like the publication has taken on a personal vendetta, which blurs the line between journalism and opinion. Social media had a lot to say on this matter. Who is us? You were writing articles after articles, reporting negative stories about the EFF, but today you've the audacity to complain. You bash and decampaign the EFF every week and then turn around and say how the very same EFF has failed you. Speak for yourself, the EFF hasn't failed me. And let's be honest, when a publication like the Mail and Guardian gets this personal, it makes you wonder if there's an underlying agenda at play. Are we reading a well-reasoned critique? Or is this just a thinly veiled attempt to sway public opinion against the EFF? So what do you think, Mzansi? Is the EFF really on a downward spiral? Or is this just another example of media bias? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, stay informed, stay focal, and keep questioning the narrative.